Hi there and welcome to my YouTube channel. Today I thought I'd dig into a problem that uh, impacts a lot, a lot of new users and new developers. And it's the fact that access, um, well, let's be serious for a minute here. It's very atypical in the way that it works, in the way that it saves data. Um, so every other application or the very, very vast majority um, you know, they don't save unless the user presses save. It's as simple as that. You go and make a change in a Word document, you close that Word document, you're going to lose that change unless at the prompt you tell it go and save it. Um, so, Access, on the other hand, if you go into a record, make a change, and then change records, close your form, close your table, whatever, that change, it's been saved. It's been committed. There's no rolling it back anymore. And that causes a lot of problems, especially for the new users that aren't familiar with the fact that Access is atypical. It just doesn't operate in the same way that most other applications worldwide operate. Over the years, I've seen a number of different forum questions relating to this. And typically people are just blown off and told, well, that's just not the way access works and suck it up, put on your big boy pants and live with it. But the reality is we can make access work in a more conventionally understood and expected manner. And it really isn't very hard to achieve. So today, and in, in my most recent article, I thought I'd quickly delve into the subject matter and show you just how simple it truly can be to achieve if that is, you know, the desired path that you want to take for your application, your form. If that's the desired behavior you want to sh give to your users, give them the user experience, sometimes that's what the client wants, that's what the client needs to get. And it can be provided to them. So enough blah blah. Um, as you can see here, I have a new article. You can go to it. There isn't too much text. And the code is all there that you can just copy and paste. For our purposes today, let me start up my database. Demo database here. And as you can see, it is very, very, very basic. So what have I done? I've created a very simple table here with just a couple fields. It can be anything. It makes no difference. The, the underlying data makes no difference in this approach. And then I have my form. Now, both samples are providing the exact same form. It's the code behind the form that changes the behavior and pushes things a little further. So let's start off by looking at the most basic case. So we have here two fields, like just like the table. And if I come here, and I choose to edit something, so I delete the last name in this case, and I close my form. Now I haven't pressed save, but Access's behavior would be that it is saved. But as you'll see in my most basic version, it isn't saved. The change is only saved when I tell it to save. So now I've authorized it to perform the save of the change. Now when I close and I reopen, that last name is gone. Otherwise, I can do anything I want. It won't make a difference. It will not be saved. It will not be committed. So this save button is key to the actual form performing its save operation. So how am I achieving this? It's very simple. We're using a combination of two form events that you can see here, current event and the before update event in combination with the save button here, which is a third event. So let's go into the code. Let's look at what happens when we first initially get onto a new record. Well, the first thing I'm doing is I'm setting this variable to false. What is this variable? Well, the variable is up here. It's a module level variable and it is uh, the variable Boolean. So it's true or false that allows, tells the form, yes, you can save or no, you cannot save the record. That's all it is. So when we initially come on to a new record, we're navigating, we switch records, we load a record, whatever, we're setting that to false. No, do not save any changes. If we press the save button, however, 
then we're changing that from false to true. We're saying, yes, you're allowed to save whatever is on this form, the record. Everything else is controlled through the before update event. And that's the beauty here. It's so simple. It comes here. It looks at that variable. What is the status of that variable? If it's false, so the person, it still hasn't been authorized to save whatever's happened. Well, in that case, we're just going to roll it back and we're setting the before update to cancel. So just don't perform the save or anything and it closes down normally and nothing was committed. If on the other hand, it was a true, so we authorized it to save, well, then it's going to come here. True doesn't equal false. So it skips over all of this and basically nothing changes to access as default behavior. It's just going to commit the change. So we don't have to code anything special for the true event. We just have to code for the false, which is by default, what will happen by default. Now that we're using these module level booleans to validate whether it should be saved or not. And that's it. It's really, really, really simple. So there you have it. The most basic form. Now where things I guess fall down a little bit, let me down here a little bit, is the simple fact that, you know, let's say someone made an entry and they go and they close their form. Oh, there's no prompt to say, you know, that record, you made changes, maybe you wanted to save it before you closed it. Maybe, you, you know, you made a, a slip there, you, you didn't intentionally close it without saving. We want to go that extra mile. We want to ensure that our users don't have those incidents where they might make multiple entries in a form and then click that close thinking they're going to get a prompt and they don't and they lose, you know, 10, 15 minutes of work. God knows. So I push things a little further and now it's basically the same form, but now we have a cancel button. We have a save button. As you can see right now, they're not even enabled because we just loaded the record. Nothing has changed. So there's nothing to save. And then if we come in here, we'll just John D. And now if I close using the close, I get a prompt. This record has been modified. Would you like to save the changes? Now we're getting a little closer to what we see in most other applications. This is the exact type of scenario that you get, let's say in Word and PowerPoint, where you close a document. If you made changes, it always asks you, or do you want to save before closing? And you can say yes or no. The choice is you yours. So if I say no and we reopen, oops, it didn't save the change. If I come here and I click yes this time and I reopen, it saved the change. And as soon as I make a change, you'll notice these buttons become available to me. And if I press cancel, it reverts the change. And if instead I do save, now it's been committed and my buttons are no longer accessible to me because technically it's been committed. There's nothing left to save again. And once again, we can close. And these buttons, you know, I put them at the bottom. Obviously, you want to create a little toolbar up here in your top of your form. Go for it. The placement changes nothing. Nothing is related to form footer, form header, detail section. None of, none of that. So once again, the code is pretty straightforward. Yes, there's a little bit more this time. I've added a button. So we, for sure there's an event there. And if you look over here now, we've got four events instead of the two, but the basic concept remains the same. So let's jump into the code and see exactly what I'm doing. So if we start up here, the same module level variable has been declared. And if we look at the current, you're going to see I've flipped. I've flipped the logic where I'm saying by default, yes, save the record. Okay. Currently the record hasn't been dirtied. So saving it has no impact. It's going to be the exact same record. And I'm, because I'm loading a new record and there've been no changes, so there's nothing yet to commit or roll back. I'm disabling my two buttons. Now you'll see. However, that now I'm also using the form dirty event. So when someone makes a change in a form and dirties that record, because there's a change now, 
Now I'm setting the save to false because I want to disable the default behavior of saving until which point the user clicks that save button. So I'm disabling it now and now I'm enabling my two buttons because a change has occurred. So therefore the user has the choice to cancel, roll back what just occurred or press that save button and say, yeah, yeah, I actually want to save this change. I, I concur. Then we come here and we look at the uh, save button. The save button's basically the same general idea. Now we're saying yes, save the record. And then I'm performing the me dirty true if it is. So therefore it's a dirty form. There's been a change. I'm saying save it. That in its turn will be triggering a before update, which is now going to validate that same variable. But now we just switched to true. I clicked save. So I want it to be saved. So if it was set to true because the person clicked the save button. Now it's going to come here. It's not false. So it jumps over all of this and it just saves it like it always did. Exact same scenario as the basic version. If on the other hand, the person closed the form and never pressed this save button, well, then it's going to come here. It's going to be false. And now it's going to give me that prompt. If the person specifically selected, no, they don't want to save the changes. Then it's going to do the um, update um, me undo. So it's going to reverse whatever changes occurred in that record. And it's going to exit saving the record if necessary. If you click yes, it skips over this. And then it just runs normally. So it commits the record. It does the default access behavior. Similarly, after an update has occurred, we're going to set that variable back to true and disable our two controls is if we had just loaded the record because we've committed it. So it's been saved. We're at that uh, starting point again. The last thing we can look at is the cancel, the cancel button. Well, if I click the cancel button, it's going to first check, you know, is the form dirty? If it is dirty, so a change, some type of change has occurred since it was loaded or whatever, then it's going to undo those changes. Once it's undone those changes, we're back to that starting status for that record. Now we can set it back to saving as allowed because nothing has changed. And we can disable those two buttons because once again, we're back at that starting point where nothing has changed. And that's it. So basically it always comes back down to the same thing. We load, don't need to save anything. We load the form initially, we're in initial status. So we know this is the same values that appear in our table. So at this point, there's nothing to save or roll back. So they're disabled. The minute we dirty our form, make a change. Now the user has those options. If he cancels, he rolls back the change. We're back at that starting point and those buttons are no longer useful or necessary. So I disable them. Once we dirty it again, they become enabled once again. And if you save, it's once again, we're back at a neutral point because we've committed the data. It's been committed to the table. So we're back at a, that starting point for the current record. And therefore we can disable the buttons until which point the user dirties that form again. So we're using two buttons or now we also have this prompt here which is effectively, if you click yes, the same as having pressed the save button. If you click no, it's going to undo the change, but still allow the form to close. And that's it. So there you have it. A pretty simple way that you can now take your forms and make them behave a little bit more like what a lot of users are expecting a behavior of a form to be in access when they don't know better, when they don't understand the default way that access runs. Uh, one thing to keep in mind here, uh, important factor is if you go down this path with your users, then you need to do it everywhere. Okay. You can't do one form this way and another form the default way. You're just going to cause chaos. Your users aren't going to understand what's going on in the other form. And you're going to end up with a mess of data. Uh, also, 
you know, if your users are going to use different databases, um, well, even if they don't, you should be making them very clear on the fact that this is not the default way access typically works and that they need to at least be aware of this when they try to go and use other databases wherever they may be even if you don't create them right so that you've gone out of your way to make it behave this way they need to understand this is not the default behavior so don't expect this if you go and work in someone else's database and that's it guys uh, really really simple code there isn't a lot here one way or another as always i highly highly urge you you know put in the error handling everywhere um, i didn't put it just to simplify what's on screen for you while we're going over and doing these videos but you should have error handling throughout um, it's just you know it's taking that extra precaution to avoid any problems and uh, especially if you deploy ACCDDBs, um, which typically you shouldn't be, but if you are, be sure you have error handling throughout. And that's it. I hope this helps a few of you out there. I hope it answers the question and helps some of you implement this if this is the desired behavior you want for your application, your forms, um, for your users. Uh, remember, we're always here for our end users or our clients. And it's important to try, at least, to give them exactly what they want. So I'm going to leave it there, guys. Um, hope this was informative. Like always, I greatly appreciate you guys spending a couple minutes of your day with me and supporting my channel in the way you have. Um, we will see you in the next one. If you don't mind, like, share, subscribe, and anything you can do to uh, spread the word is greatly appreciated. Take care. Have a great one, guys.